Hey everybody, this is Eki here, and this is kind of a first for the Diffuse Congruence show. So the original plan that Pervez and I had was that after our live episode, which also dropped today, so if you're listening to this, not having listened to that, I would suggest checking that out first, but we had planned to record a little addendum, maybe five minutes or so, just kind of coalescing our thoughts on the conversation we had live, and then some of the stuff we wanted to add, and as tends to happen when he and I get together, The next thing you know, five minutes turned into 25 minutes, and we had this terrific conversation, and we decided, you know what, let's let that conversation stand, and let's turn this into a little mini-show. So this isn't episode 30-whatever, this is like live show plus, and... I think we had an interesting chat. I think you'll enjoy listening to it. So we're putting it out there for you to peruse, and hopefully you dig it. Thanks for listening. Well, we hope uh, you guys enjoyed the uh, live show. We had a blast doing it. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was a good audience, and we want to thank everyone who came out. Um, We had a lot of fun. As I said, um, uh, this is kind of a postscript to the show. Um, wanted to. This is no longer live. <laughs> exactly. Uh, back to our normal routine. Um, and uh, and I, I proposed the idea of doing this just because um, I had been thinking about a couple of things um, after we recorded the live show. And um, it, it does, in a sense, tangentially relate to some of the things Mark talks about. Um, you know, during the live recording where he got into talking about grief and talking about loss and responding to it. And, you know, I, I just couldn't help but, you know, for me, just sort of biographically um, dealing with in the last couple of weeks, the like sort of responding to the death of Prince, um, sort of another 80s icon that, you know, I mean, I, I, I it meant something to me just because, you know, I, I mean, that's my generation, as I'm sure it's yours too, Zucky. That dance. Yeah. Oh, right. That was right. my first that, exposure to print. Oh, wow. No, I, I go way further back than that. So, um, uh, bad dance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I forget. Right. Um, and then, um, and then also, you know, I, I, you know, that same week, interestingly enough, there was, uh, also two notable deaths within the Muslim community. Uh, one being, um, the, the, um, the uh, poet laureate, um, you know, uh, Daniel Moore, uh, Abdul Hai Moore, uh, as well as Sheikh Hamza's father, sure. um, who, who also died that same week. So there's just sort of a lot going on. And I guess starting with the whole Prince thing um, and the death of Prince, and obviously right now as we're recording, you know, coroners are still investigating what exactly, uh, you know, what may have caused it, what, what the cause of death may have been. and, and uh, there's all kind of all kinds of rumors circulating, but um, that's not so much what I wanted to talk about. For me, it was more about just the conversations that were going on in social media among Muslims. Hmm. You know, and I was almost predicting this because this almost happens every time. Kind of a notable person who's iconic. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I didn't see it as viscerally as I did uh, it, like when 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 David when David Bowie passed. Uh, but whatever, maybe just there's not that many Muslims who are responding to it. But and, to David Bowie, yeah. To, but this time around, there were just these conversations, and you know, to me, it was kind of the you had obviously the you know people who were like grieving publicly on social media as people tend to do, and when I say people, I mean Muslims uh, specifically here. Um, and so this is sort of within the uh, Muslim bubble, um, social media bubble. Okay. However, that's wanna... that's a very narrow it s- is scope well, here. It's funny you say that because, well, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll come back to that a little later. Sorry, um, but I, I do want to come back to that because that's very interesting uh, that you say that. But anyway, so mu- conversations among Muslims, people sort of just, just generally grieving, as you saw in sort of on the Twitter sphere and uh, probably among your non-Muslim cohorts on your on Facebook or coworkers, whatever maybe have been the case. But among Muslims, I felt like there was always the, like people who responded to someone who was grieving or trying to process the death of Prince. Mm -hmm. You had the response which was like, well, you know, he wasn't Muslim though. Like, and, and and by that I mean it's like, Muslims can't even like say without fear of backlash, like rest in peace or, you know, God have mercy on his soul. And 
th there's a real part of that that just, or there's a part of that that really bothers me. I don't know if, if you respond, for, forget about your feelings on, like, like you said, I mean, your introduction to Prince came relatively later. I don't know how much you followed him or followed his music, sorry. But I don't know if you saw these conversations and if you had any... I, I mean, not, not, it, not so much with Prince specifically. I mean, just anecdotally, I've saw, I saw lots of people sort of expressing their grief. And, you know, part of me was, it felt there was, like there was a lot of bandwagon grieving going on. Okay. Where suddenly people who in no way, shape, or form could have been Prince fans suddenly, oh, woe is me, they're rending of garments, you know, which felt a little, a little much. But that, that sent, yeah. tends to be the case. Yeah. With any of the, I mean, I feel I felt the same thing with David Bowie, like mm -hmm. people who like, yeah. come on, like, yeah, you know, right, right. But but as far as the the, I think what you're talking about yeah. is within the Muslim community. Oh yeah, people expressing grief and then sort of being told like, why are you grieving for this person? Grieving over a non-Muslim, exactly. I, exactly. I, I can't say I've ever experienced yeah. anything like that. Right. I mean, because I know you've written on your blog. You've written like, like I guess so-called obituaries. I mean, sure, in, in sure. fact, right about yeah, people. and 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 primarily people in the I would say entertainment industry, or the creative industries. Yeah, and like I remember, in fact, when Leonard Nimoy died last year, I mean, yeah. uh, your your obituary, your post, you know, sort of helped me kind of as I was processing it because that was another big one for me. You know? Sure, uh, an icon from my from my childhood. Sure, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, I and I think... So you've never kind of gotten that response back, like, well, hey... Like, you know, I remember writing about Philip Seymour Hoffman, uh, ah, who, who, yeah. who, who who overdosed, and I think uh, I got a comment to the effect of, like, why are you writing about this guy, you know, look look at how he died, you know, because he, he passed away because of drug overdose. And, you know, my point was, well, the, the way he died is is tragic, and it's worth remembering the quality of work that he did in that specific field, right. and and the, and I think it's worth recognizing. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of passing judgment on somebody who succumbed to an addiction to drugs because to me to me addiction is sickness and it's not something it's something that you are, uh, you know, uh, enslaved to to some extent. And so th th there that is a tragedy. You know, I mean that. I I don't know. You know that mm. for me personally, when I write something on my website about somebody passing that's because that person had some kind of impact on me and i'm like i want to express what this person meant to me and by extension why their loss mm -hmm. is something that saddens me the idea yeah. for example that the you know if we're talking about philip seymour hoffman the fact that we will never see another philip seymour hoffman performance was sad to me the fact that leonard nimoy we will never again see leonard nimoy as mr spock mm -hmm was something that hit me in a deep dark way and and all of you know whether we're talking about prince or anybody else i mean the, whenever somebody passes away it the reason we feel grief is because it's a reminder of our own mortality correct correct um i, I think there was a tweet that went around and it kind of became this meme after the death of prince which was um uh uh where the person i don't i'm, I'm not quoting verbatim but she she, she wrote to the effect that we grieve like like and, and it was in the context of, of prince but but she was like you know we grieve for these people that we didn't know because they their life or their work in you know got us to know our you know know ourselves better sure so we don't grieve for them because we personally knew them but we grieve for them because of their work meant so much to us that we found we discovered parts of ourselves through their work Sure. If that means anything. No, absolutely. So I think that's kind of what you're saying too. And I mean, or you're kind of saying with regards to, yeah, and it's also a reflection on mortality in general, especially when someone dies so unexpectedly, as in the case of um, uh, Prince, relatively young, or in the case of, right, I mean, a lot of these people, um, sure. I mean, certainly Philip Seymour Hoffman, when it's not natural causes and you're yeah. like, wow, you know, a life cut short, right? So. But anyway, I guess coming back to the main point that I, that that I why we wanted to do this postscript is just I guess sort of I guess I guess vent in a sense that look I mean if we are if if we're in a place in a, as a community where we can't even allow people to grieve in their own way grieve excuse me in their own ways um, to who and and grieve and respond to things whether or not you agree with with who they're grieving for or how they're going about it. Like, what does that say about our community? I mean, to me, that, that's a real indictment about the fact that we can't even have those kind of conversations in public or, or and fine, it's public, so it's not a safe space, but 
we're not even we're not even safe to say things that we feel without without fear of repercussion or judgment is my point but isn't yeah. okay so i'm i'm going to play devil's advocate Please. here by ver- i mean because what you're specifically talking about is the element of grieving in public via social media okay and so isn't part of putting stuff out there in public the fact that you may get you're going to get all the whole spectrum of responses. That means right. you're going to get people who are That's like, true. shut the hell up. Like, I mean, I mean you know what I mean? It's it, yeah. like, this is because uh, here's my point. This notion of grieving in public is a relatively new phenomenon. And true. it's, it's relatively new in the, or grieving in, or processing things or anything in public. Because right. now we do it all publicly. It's it's. I mean, if yeah. if we think of social media mm-hmm. as as sort of a twenty four seven performance. Yeah. I mean, you're making a choice. Is my point, right? So in right. other words, in the absence of social media, you're like, oh man, Prince died. Oh, jeez, I can't. You know, I'm gonna listen to some Prince right now. Or, or you know, you're a Prince fan, and and I'm like, hey, did you hear Prince? Died? And we're kind of like, oh man, mm-hmm. you know, and we have this conversation. Yeah. Right. But now. It's sort of, it's our outside face, Mm. right? So in other words, there's a level of performativity Mm. to this process that would not have been there. So maybe some of the backlash is a response to that. Like, it's kind of like you're free to grieve however you want, but but why are you in my face about it? Okay, that's fair enough. But I mean, I think, look, when Prince died, it'd be hard to go anywhere on the internet without finding an article or an obituary or a, you know, or a tribute to Prince. So, I mean... Come on, right? I mean, it's not like it's not like this person is grieving over something that isn't necessarily already in the public conversation. Or, sure. Yeah, that's what I, I guess. So, to your point, I guess I'm, and, and again, I'm sort I'm, of disagreeing. I'm, with I'm, your I'm, point. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm being yeah. devil's advocate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that's a fair point about other things. Uh, I know, for example, recently you 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 posted something about just women and sports media. I yeah. Forget. But you were like, look, I think it's a broader conversation about just women who put their voice out there face this typical like right and, so, I didn't and read the article, just just sorry. to contextualize yeah. what what Pervez is talking it, about it was the Aaron Andrews case right it well it's not specifically yeah. that it's it's uh, there, there's an article and you can find it on YouTube yeah. but essentially you have these two sports writers who are female who have these men who they don't know who sit across from them and read to the women uh-huh. tweets that the women have received now these men did not write the tweets yes yes yes, yes. so essentially it's it's not it's like Jimmy Kimmel's it's like, like Jimmy celebrities Kimmel's mean tweets but it's more like vile tweets you know what i mean <laughs> got it and, well and and it's really i mean if you're listening to this yeah. seek it out go to yeah. uh, go to youtube i don't know i don't know how you'd find it but but uh, check it out it's it's women sports writers tweets and it's it's very very difficult to watch and mm. and the the assumption underlying these tweets is the idea that how dare you woman have an opinion about this man talk mm. right and so this isn't specifically in the context of sports writers right. but you know what Th- this same conversation yeah. is being had by women who in you know in quote unquote nerd communities <laughs> right. and in, i mean it, book, yeah, yeah yeah you know look up gamergate right oh, google google that yeah go, you know and it's it's um, it's this the ultimate power play which is Women don't have the right to be part of this. This is our thing, mm. and it's disgusting on on any number of levels. But you know the yeah. what's what's most revealing is the tone and tenor of the tweets they receive, which is always about you know men uh, demonstrating their power yeah. over women, right? Hyper masculinity. Yeah. That's exactly right. yeah. in a very in a very mm-hmm. uh, horrific way, mm-hmm. and and it's it's sad. That that's that's right where they go, mm, you mm. know. Well, you know, it's. I mean, I, I guess tangentially related to that, and we're way off topic from what we started. But I mean, I think we are sort of having a rumination on social media in general. But um, like the what happened to Megan Kelly after Trump went after her, sure. right, in the same, debate, same which thing. was same, same thing. thing. How I mean, dare her. she have an opinion about politics? Right, and 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 there's you can and again you can Google this article, but they kind of did they actually map out the uptick of like her being called. Um, What's the word? You know, like just, just, just horrible, horrible. Words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Beyond the scope of this show. <laughs> right, right. There you go. Thank you. Um, and, and and it was all after the, it was the so, so called Trump effect. Right. You know, after he sort of went after her. And, or and we're should... gonna see a whole mo- mess more of that in the next Let's... six months. <laughs> but, uh, just ha- batten down the hatches because oh, that's a come. I want to gr- I want to grieve about that publicly. How about that? Yeah. Um, 
But anyway, so sorry, going back to the conversation about Prince. So I guess, like I said, I mean, I mean this is more of a rant and uh, we've turned into a larger conversation, but that's fine. I mean, I guess my only thing was like, look, I agree with you what you're saying that, look, people are grieving publicly. So to a certain extent, they're, they should expect some sort of response or they maybe are even consciously or subconsciously wanting a response. Um, however, as I said, from within the Muslim community, it's often this like, well, you know, and it comes down to these sort of like theological, you know, well, he's not a Muslim and we can't say rest in peace or we can't say God bless him or whatever, you know, and, and that's what I guess parts of like that to me fundamentally does bother me because I mean, if you want to, Hey, if you want to have a, an, if you want to have a real theological conversation about you know, what happens to people who are non-Muslims who die in the hereafter or whatever? Hey, let's have that conversation. But let's not turn this person's poor, this poor person's grief over a pop icon into that theological conversation is all or, I'm saying. Or, or any person for that matter. There because, you go. because I think well, when, when we couch it as quote unquote a pipe, pop icon that... And I think that's a great, I think that's a great segue into where I wanted to go, which is... Also to talk about the fact that, again, that same week, uh, I think it was a few days before, Sheikh Hamza's father passed away, okay? And Allah, Ya Arham, you know, may God bless uh, Professor Hansen, and, you know, and, and it was, you know, I, one of uh, Sheikh Hamza's siblings wrote this beautiful piece, and again, search it out if you haven't read it, just about how, it's, I think it was called Dying in America, and it was just essentially about how they wanted to make certain, the family wanted to make certain, uh, certain decisions about how he was buried and bringing him home during his last days and just that whole process and how in today's modern sort of healthcare structure or whatever, how difficult those things are for families um, to wanting to make those decisions on their own, on their own terms. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was just how not only that article that one of Professor, I'm um, sorry, one of Sheikh Hamza's siblings wrote about the process went viral and and that's where I want to come back to your point about the narrowness of the Muslim bubble but let's again put a little pin in that for a second and you know people were circulating it and and, and not only that but then it was like Sheikh Hamza's post on Facebook which was like again essentially like a tribute or an obituary a mini a very small obituary um, that again went quote unquote viral on Facebook you know people were sharing it and liking it and so on and I remember reading it and I remember there was one part of that where it, it, so the whole thing reads like any other obituary you could imagine or a son grieving over the loss of his father but there was one part where he talks about how in the final days before he passed he took shahada he 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 took the he he um, took the uh, testimony of faith with his physician dr asad tarsin a dear friend someone who was very close to the to, to Sheikh Hamza's family and certainly I'm sure spent a lot of time with his father during those last days as being a physician um, and so you know he gave his Shahada to Assad and I guess I was thinking like it's kind of like one of those comic books like what if like what, what are they called like where the universe you, you think of like Superman growing like, up like in Russia like world else world right well what if what if Sheikh Hamza's father had passed away as a non-Muslim sure I wonder, and again, this sort of ties into the whole Prince conversation, like, I wonder what the response would have been among Muslims. Would, would his obituary, whether Sheikh Hamza wrote it or the article that his sister wrote, go, go as viral? Again, I, I, I use that term carefully because, I mean, again, we're talking about the narrow, very narrow, as you pointed out, Zaki, Muslim bubble. But would it have gotten shared? There you go. Has. There you go. You know, I, yeah. I'd like to think it would because because I'd like to think so, but I I don't I it, I, I, uh, it, I mean honestly, until you brought it up right now, it it never occurred to me that this wouldn't be momentous regardless of yeah what the circumstances would be. I didn't find out until much later that he had taken the shot, and I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, she like for me, it it didn't matter mm. in, in like that that doesn't make the loss, and 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 I feel the loss because I love Sheikh Hamza. That's right. And That's right. And well, I guess that's my point. It's like uh, we're also not the people who are, you know, berating people for, uh, or you know, for grieving over uh, Prince. Sure, that's a good point. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. I mean, we're just that's it's not us. I mean, I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back, but yeah. hey, there's 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 a few things that we're, we're, we're okay good people, about. <laughs> is what you're saying. That, I will take your compliment. <laughs> right. Well, if that makes us good, then yeah, uh, granted, uh, or guilty as charged, but um. 
Yeah, you know, and so I, I just thought of that because again, and, and I guess I thought about it more after the whole, as I was processing Prince's death because I was like, wait, just a couple of days ago, you know, we were okay with publicly grieving over the loss of someone we don't know, again, essentially, mm -hmm. but we know him by virtue of whether it's, it's shaped because by virtue of his son, in the, in the case of Sheikh Holmes' father, Professor Hansen, or, is, or it's the case of Prince, we know him through his music. So it's just like, look, people are responding to someone, yeah, they don't know, but they're just responding, man. They're trying to process something. Yeah. So I guess that's, the, yeah, and, and I, maybe that's something the audience can think about and, and sort of rumi ruminate over in conversations that you have among your friends and stuff, because I think that's, a, I think that's, a, I think that, that is an interesting conversation to have. And, um, uh, like you said, you didn't really think about it before I brought it up, but I mean, a few of us had the people that I sort of have been talking to. And about just to this. be clear, I don't think about most things until Pervez brings them up. That's, <laughs> that's I'm kind of the dullard in our little relationship here. So, <laughs> not true. That's but a okay. knock on me. Nah, really. nah, that's not true. But okay, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. So this is something for the audience to think about. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments about what we what we talked about, please do share. Um, I guess we are putting our what we're processing out there for this people is, to respond to. This is our to. public <laughs> grieving, I suppose. Yeah, grieving over people grieving. So um, that's about it. But again, uh, uh, I guess, uh, oh yeah, I, I guess I, I've teased it enough. So to your point about it being a very narrow, I, so I always Muslims, get a, yeah. Muslims on social media. I'm saying that's like a, that's like a di demographic of a demographic of a demographic. Right, right. It's just, I, it's funny because uh, the, the reason I said that's funny you say that and I wanted to come back to it is because I, I, I can't tell you how often I hear people who come up to me and they're like, it's going viral. People are talking about it. And it's something like, like oh, you know, it's the like the, it's like the Muppies video, right? Like, oh, it's gone viral. Oh, or, and the reaction to it have gone viral. I'm like, first of all, I think, you know, it's like one of those instances of like, maybe I don't, or it's, I don't think you're using the word yeah. the way. The way it's Remember right. when going viral was a bad thing? <laughs> Remember that was like, oh, you should oh, yeah. see a doctor about that. <laughs> okay, but, but that notwithstanding, <laughs> we know how it's used now, and and I'm like, let's let's couch it with the with the viral talk. We should say quote unquote. You, there viral, you go. Because, Thank you. Because again, like Zucky pointed out, we're talking about a di a a sliver within a sliver within yeah. a sliver kind of thing. So yeah. it's like, please. Uh, so that's just, that's, I guess that's the only point I really wanted to make about that. I don't know if you had any other thoughts about that. No, I yeah. think, I think yeah, that about, about sums it up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, leave, leave people alone. If, if they're sad about X or Y person passing away, you know what? Give them, give them space. I don't, I don't think it's your job to pass judgment on whether they're grieving the right way or yeah. whether their grieving is right. So, so. Shut your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I think it's like yeah. he's being nice. But to me, I need to be really honest with you. Like, if I can, you know, just be kind of transparent, like, or just be totally, um, you know, vulnerable here. I, I'll say that to me, it's not unlike when people like grieved over nine eleven. I mean, I, I, I know, going, you, the, probably the listeners are like, whoa, dude, I yeah. mean, you're blown this way out of like. But no, I mean, to me, it was like, okay, well, you, you couldn't just grieve over the loss of three thousand Americans without sort of making the caveat that, but American foreign policy, you know, I mean, sure. there's always the caveat. So sure. like, oh, we're sad, but da 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 da. You know? See, I mean, honestly, my feeling is just a lot of what you're describing is, I mean, it's sort of part and parcel of the American Muslim experience. And I think, I don't, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about the negative energy that people expend on this. You know, stuff. it's funny, and again, we just keep going on and on. But I, I, but I think I'm responding to what you just said about a part and parcel of the American Muslim experience. Lest we forget, a part of the American Muslim experience or American Muslim community is a growing, you know, by God's grace alone, I would argue. But anyway, by God's grace, a growing population of converts, right? i.e. people who are non-Muslim, who were non-Muslim, who are embracing the faith. Which, I don't know if you know this or not, but, and I'm sorry for being so cynical here or sarcastic, but, but, but anyway, the point is they are leaving behind, or when they embrace a faith, they're not leaving behind, but they come from families, parents, mothers, fathers, sisters, uh, wives and, and husbands in some cases who are non-Muslim. Sure. So if you want to talk about you know something that uh, that is part and par par parcel of the American um, Muslim experience, 
by God's grace, again, Sheikh Hamza's father, fine, took shahada before he passed, but the countless number of converts that we have in our community whose parents pass away uh, after they embrace Islam, meaning after the, the person embraces Islam, or, or a sibling dies, we're saying that those people can't grieve, or grieve over the loss of their father or their brother or their father, you know, their family member without, or a friend, without, again, having to now couch you know be careful where they publicly grieve mm -hmm. it's a greater conversation right yeah. i mean it's to and so and it's funny you know in the in the very in the same very context and i don't think he'll mind me saying this um uh, because he he, he's, he said this in a public forum but like you know this is a conversation i had with with osama cannon and you know and, and again he has said this publicly so i don't mind sharing this but you know he, he and he even says he made the mistake of doing this once which was like kind of like okay lesson learned i'm not doing this again but he had a very dear family member pass away, and he posted about it on Facebook. And, you know, the comments were great. You know, you kind of follow the thread and, you know, God bless him. I'm sorry for your loss. And, you know, this. but then slowly but surely, right, out of the woodwork come sure. the, was he Muslim, Sidi Osama? Like, uh, how, how can we say rest in peace? And it, it, right there on the man's thread, right? Wow. I mean, right. And See, that, that just, I mean, uh, that that to me as far as, rules of just basic decorum it's like you know what exactly um just keep it to yourself you know that that's that's where you shut your face because you know what let this person express their grief in their own way and if you've got nothing hey guys this is come on no and in the case of shaykh Hamza, i mean i'm sorry in the case of osama and in that particular context context he literally had to delete those comments and i don't blame him for doing yeah, so sure. because again he posted those where it was uh where it was available for friends and family of his Many of whom are non-Muslim. And they're like, he was like, what does that say about my new faith and my new faith community where, you know, this kind of ugliness comes out? Well, but that, here's what I would say. That kind of ugliness is yeah. not exclusive yeah, to, yeah. Okay. guess what? Yeah. <laughs> look at, look outside the sliver of a sliver of a sliver. It's way the heck worse. You know, true, I mean, th this is true, the problem, right? True. And and this gets to a broader conversation about social about, media, about social media yeah. and the anonymity and the and the the connect. Because bottom line, bottom it's line, like they, every you, single one of those people would they say the same thing right. to Sidious face? They would not. Right. So there's there in the conversation ends. Right. You're talking about like the comment section of any news sure. article, yeah. for example. Sure. Um, which, as someone rightfully points out, you know, like Trump is sort of the. Uh, personification sure. of the comment section of a, of a of an article online. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, if you ever if you're ever angry at yourself, just <laughs> dive into the comment section underneath any news article. Any news article. It could be like new uh, playground has been built down the street, and see how fast the comment section blame Obama for something, right? So, right. <laughs> so if you feel like diving into a pit of self-loathing yeah. and, and probably bo, just uh, read read that. So you know. On that note. <laughs> yeah. Really. Uh, On that pleasant note. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Zeki. And uh, and that is where I like to end every conversation where somebody says they completely agree with me. So thank you, Pervez, for having this conversation with me. I feel better about myself. This has been the opposite of reading a comment section. <laughs> thank you, uh, and we hope you guys enjoyed it too. And 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 it, I hope it started a conversation that you guys have. And so uh, again, thank you for listening, guys. We'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, and uh, see you next time. Yep, go to go to diffuse congruence uh, uh, at gmail dot com or, or email diffuse congruence at gmail dot com. <laughs> Even better, go to facebook dot com slash diffuse congruence and of course write us a review on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio. Leave us a star rating. Let us know how we're doing, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for listening.